located halfway between Shreveport and Minden, on what was once known as the Old Wire Road, lies Fillmore, one of the outstanding historical spots of Bossier Parish. It nestles on a high plateau overlooking surrounding hills and valleys. Most historians in North Louisiana credit Fillmore with being the oldest settlement in Bossier Parish. The Dove Alexander Horton family of Fillmore is shown standing in front of their home in this 1904 photograph. It was located on what is now the southeast corner of Highway 157 and Highway 80. Their house is actually the old Connell Inn that was built by and named for Thomas Dixon Connell in about 1848. For years, it served the community, providing rooms to weary travelers. At the time, the area was called Connell's Crossroads. Crossroads mercantile establishments in the 1800s were the centers for information, the post office, and the source of innumerable personal, household, and farm items. Fillmore probably exemplified the idea of Bossier's Crossroads more than any other local community. In May of 1852, Connell's Crossroads was renamed Fillmore after the 13th President of the United States, Millard Fillmore. Fillmore is located eight miles south of Bellevue on the Old Wire Road. The Old Wire Road was the first road across North Louisiana wilderness. It began as a Native American trail. As settlers moved in, it became a stagecoach road, making the passage from Monroe to Shreveport a bit easier. It also served as a pioneer route to Texas. After 1847, it became known as the Wire Road because of the parallel telegraph lines that ran along with it. A commercial stagecoach operated along this road, with stagecoach changes made at the Connell Inn, which was built around 1848. For $12, a person could ride the stagecoach 120 miles from Monroe to Fillmore. The Fillmore Cemetery grew out of the Fillmore Methodist Church. Shortly after the land was deeded to the church by Thomas Dixon Connell, in 1848, the small wooden structure was built. All that remains today is a monument dedicated in 1966, consisting of several iron ore rocks that comprised part of the original church foundation. Coincidentally, Connell, the benefactor who deeded the land to the church, was also the first to be buried in the cemetery upon his death in 1849. One of the oldest educational institutions in North Louisiana was the Fillmore Academy. It opened in September of 1860. Professor Lyman Griswold taught at the academy and was also the first teacher in the Houghton Public School. He married Miss Amanda Lawrence, daughter of the pioneering Lawrence family. When William Houghton moved his family to Bossier Parish, he had no idea that the land he pioneered along with the Lawrence family would one day be named after him. He knew it as Lawrenceville. His daughter Mary Jane was married to Dr. Paul Lawrence. When the Vicksburg, Shreveport, and Pacific Railroad came through the area, Mary Jane, or Molly as she was usually known, sold land to the railroad. The train station was set to be named Lawrence Station, but there was already a Lawrence Station in Mississippi. Molly's maiden name of Houghton was selected as a station name, and the community of Houghton began. Accounts say that the first railroad station set up in downtown Houghton was actually within a boxcar. It was officially designated a town on September 1, 1884. In 1855, Fillmore residents began to leave their homes for Houghton. The glamour of moving trains and a railroad center, coupled with bad roads between these two points, forced upon the denizens of Fillmore the inevitable result, the village's decline and fall. The crash was made complete when at a later date, the Louisiana and Arkansas Railroad in 1909 pushed through to Shreveport on the north edge of Fillmore, establishing the town of Princeton. But Fillmore residents left their homes and moved to Houghton. Trains rolled in and out, whistles and brakes screeching, smoke and steam billowing. The Vicksburg, Shreveport, and Pacific Railroad ushered in the excitement of changing times. Many people spent afternoons meeting the trains because most of the families in the town knew the railroad conductors by name. Being chosen as a location for a railroad station set into motion a significant growth spurt for Houghton. The Bossier Banner newspaper reported in July that Lawrenceville, situated 10 miles south of Bellevue, on the VSP Railroad is having quite a boom in business and improvements. There is life and bustle everywhere, and our new railroad town evidently has a bright future before it, in which well directed industry and liberal investments will surely be well rewarded. Success to the new town and its progressive citizens. Homes for the railroad workers and station agents were constructed just south of the tracks. 
Several of these homes are still standing, including this one currently owned by Lewis and Judy Covington. Hi, I'm Pam Carlisle, and I am here with Lewis and Judy Covington, longtime residents of Houghton, Louisiana. And uh, Lewis used to be um, the director of Bossier Parish Libraries, and uh, Judy is also a retired librarian from Bossier Parish Schools. We are uh, right next to your church of mm -hmm. um, First First Baptist Houghton. Uh -huh. Is that correct? Yeah, sure. Okay. How old is the church? Probably 130 something years old. And it's always been in that location. Mm -hmm. It has. Mm -hmm. So Judy, you were the first one that, that noticed this house. Yeah, I did. I guess I was. Okay. I just and we were friends with the people that lived in that house at the time. And I loved, I loved the house. Lewis loved the yard. So we're right by the the railroad tracks, and from what you understand, this what this house was built po possibly for railroad workers. That's what we've heard from some people that were kind of old timers here. Right? That that there, there were originally three houses. They were right along this road, and they were originally built during the time of the railroad for people that worked for the railroad. And and what style was it originally? Dog trot. Dog trot, but it was closed in or partially no. or the bathroom was put in the dog trot before you all got here? Oh yes, yes. Okay. We bought it from I E and Sybil Tyner, which I think is T Y N E R. And he worked at a cotton oil type gin in Bossier City and he was on the school board at one time. Okay. And next door was Senator Harold Montgomery, one of the biggest known Louisiana senators and and characters in the history of the Louisiana Senate in Bossier Parish. In that house and his, right there? Uh-huh. And his wife was Azalee. Okay. And, and he, he lived out in the country even so he built that house for her so she could stay in the city when he was in Baton Rouge during the legislature. Oh, okay. And you're thinking the house was built around 1901? That's what, that's what we think. Uh, okay. That was based on the tax property record and, and I don't have the name now but Mr. Tyner said that they were, they told us that they were the people that built the house. I can never prove that as far as you know, the historical documentation and authentication of it. But. What was it like with the work or projects, special projects that you've done, you hmm. all have done on the house? It okay. only had one out, electrical outlet on each side of the house and no overhead lights and they would just run extension cords and <laughs> use floor lamps so, and there weren't any cabinets in the kitchen they just had open shelves and the outside wasn't he, mr tyner was thrifty and and he kept old buckets of paint all around and if the paint flaked off on part of the house he just got the closest thing he had that would match it and put it on there to cover it up so he was a character and it had to have all new plumbing underneath it had the only heat it has was, was the old freestanding gas space heaters you know open flame oh my and you, you go by and light it up and that was the only heat and then we got to be friends with him Harold Montgomery really I wish she, he, she passed before him I wish we could have recorded some of those conversations he'd come and sit on these steps and talk about politics and Annex he pulled. I don't remember any in the state senate, but he was very flamboyant and and after a lot of debate, and no telling how many dozen people have told us you, we should put siding on it. We want to keep the wood just so that's the other thing we had decided we could have put siding once. And so if you look around now, there's a few places we're in the middle of scraping because mm -hmm. it's nonstop. But we we never will regret keeping the the wood exterior instead of siding. The July 1885 minutes of the Bossier Parish School Board called for the establishment of the first public school in Houghton. The rapid growth of the one-year-old community meant that a public school was needed. During its most prosperous period, the town had the Chandler Chair Factory, a cafe, two livery stables, a dairy, and the three-story Crum Hotel. The hotels were frequented by salesmen who rented horses and rigs in the livery stables for tours of rural parish homes. The salesmen often ate their meals at the commissary of the Allentown Sawmill and Lumberyard. 
William Wadley had come to Houghton in 1889 to scout timber for a new mill when the supply of timber was exhausted at their mill in Queen City, Texas. Along with the Bossier Parish surveyor, they looked at railroads and timberland. He secured 5,000 acres for the Allentown Mill from the holdings of the VS&P Railroad. The Allentown Mill was two miles back from the railroad. It was in operation for over 20 years, when the yard later became part of the Louisiana Army Ammunition Plant. Dr. Paul Lawrence's home sits along Highway 157 in Houghton. This current house was built in the summer of 1884 to replace the original that burned down in September of 1883. The home has passed through four generations of the Lawrence family. Dr. Paul Lawrence is remembered as the one-legged horseback doctor of Houghton. Lawrence first came to Bossier Parish in 1851 when he was only 12 years old, moving here from Mississippi with his family. He obtained his education from Fillmore Academy. Then, in the fall of 1860, Lawrence began his medical studies in New Orleans. With tensions rising prior to the Civil War, he came home in December of 1861 and enlisted with the Robin Grays, a Bossier Parish company of the 19th Louisiana Infantry for the Confederacy. During the Civil War, Lawrence sustained two injuries, one of which required the amputation of his right leg. After convalescing in Mississippi with relatives until he was well and able to travel, he returned to Louisiana, wasting no time in resuming his medical studies. He returned to Bossier Parish in 1867 and began his medical practice. He married Mary Jane Houghton, daughter of Harriet and William Purvis Houghton. Besides always being on call as a town physician, he was also a third generation cotton planter, as well as a merchant owning and running a general mercantile and cotton brokerage business called Lawrence and Son. Lawrence was appointed by the Bossier Parish Police Jury as a health officer for the Fillmore area in 1878 in response to the threat of dangerous and contagious diseases, such as smallpox and yellow fever. In 1885, he was on the building committee for the Methodist Church in Houghton, which has been in the same location on East McKinley Avenue for 120 years. Elizabeth Sherwin was not born in Bossier Parish, but that did not stop her from faithfully serving the Houghton community from the time she moved there and until she departed from this earth. She began serving Houghton politically as the first woman to serve on the town council for Houghton in 1970. In 1972, she was the first alderwoman elected to the Houghton Town Council. After six years, she ran for mayor. In 1976, she became the first female mayor of Houghton, the first female mayor in Bossier Parish, and the first female Republican mayor elected in Louisiana. After her first term as mayor, she ran unopposed for re-election and joyfully continued serving the great town of Houghton. She helped Houghton to become recognized as an official bicentennial community. One of the notable Houghton natives is Joe Delaney. Delaney was a Houghton High School football star who went on to play professional football for the Kansas City Chiefs. He died in 1983 while trying to rescue three drowning children from a pond. Thousands of people attended his funeral and memorial service, which was held at Houghton High School. Joe Delaney Park is named in his honor.